condemned to die, the richest woman in all of France, the Duchess de la Beaujolais. <laughs> She's escaped. Who's escaped? The Duchess de la Beaujolais. She's, she's disappeared. What are you babbling about? The death cell. It was empty. Empty? All I found was this. No, I can't believe it. He's come back. The accursed Englishman has returned. What? What Englishman? The one who rescues aristocrats. He always leaves this when he saves one. It's his calling card. But I, I don't understand. You fool. It's the brown pumpernickel. <laughs> Tonight. Close Encounters of the Pumpernickel Kind. <laughs> Starring Frank Schuster as Mel de Tet. Another aristocrat gone. I'll find that brown pumpernickel if I have to burn down every gourmet specialty shop in Paris. <laughs> and Johnny Wayne as Sir Percy Fink, the darling of London society, who is in reality the brown pumpernickel. Effeminate Poppin' Jay. <laughs> he thinks I'm an effeminate Poppin' Jay. Little does he know that underneath these pink frilly garments, I have pink frilly underwear. <laughs> and the cast of thousands, mostly pumpernickels. You fool, you clumsy, incompetent fool. I'm sorry, Citizen Maldetest. Sorry? I can't believe that the brown pumpernickel is back. Well, he's back, all right. And it's starting all over again. Aristocrats escaping by the dozens. Do you know what happened yesterday? Two aristocrats escaped from the Bastille, and in their place, I found two brown pumpernickels. This morning, 12 aristocrats were to be delivered to the guillotine. What was delivered? A dozen pumpernickels. <laughs> you could open an investigation. I could open the bakery. <laughs> and you? You let him rescue the richest woman in France. Uh, we still have her jewels. Lucky for you, or it would have been your head. <laughs> Brown pumpernickels. They're still warm. <laughs> well, that does it, Duval. You go! <laughs> no, no, not the guillotine. Oh, just a moment, Duval. You forgot your hat. Oh, on second thought, you won't be needing it. <laughs> Citizen Maldetat. Citizen Robespierre, this is this is a great honor. Spare me your pleasantries, Maldetet. You know why I'm here. The brown pumpernickel? Exactly. That accursed Englishman has returned, hasn't he? Well, I, I'm not sure, Citizen. Well, I'm sure. Aristocrats escaping by the dozens. And everywhere I go, I find brown pumpernickels. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Citizen, here. Here, have some wine. Here, have a, have a cigar. <laughs> What are you running here, Maldertet? A revolution or a delicatessen? Well, I, I, I'm doing my best, citizen. It's not good enough. You failed, Maldertet, and you know the penalty for failure. No, no, not the guillotine. Hugo! No, no, not the no, guillotine. Not, not, but I have a plan to capture the brown pumpernickel. Take him away! But he'll give himself up. Wait a minute, Hugo. Did you say the brown pumpernickel would give himself up? Yes, citizen. You may go, Hugo. Oh, fudge. <laughs> so, how do you intend to capture the brown pumpernickel? Well, we all know he's really Sir Percy Fink, the darling of London society. And I intend to capture him with this picture. Where did you get that? From his grandparents, Lord Hillary and Lady Fink, who happened to be my prisoners in the dungeon below. Uh -huh. Now, my plan is we go to London and tell Sir Percy either he gives himself up or his grandparents die. Brilliant, Maldetet. You have a head on your shoulders. <laughs> so far. <laughs> when do we 
leaving for London. Immediately, citizen. I, uh, I took the liberty of packing a bag for you. Just a moment, Maldetet. Huh? What's in that bag? Well, your clothing, citizen. Are you sure? Well, I, I'm positive I packed it myself. Open it up. Oh, but, citizen, it's just... Open it up! <laughs> well, Maldetet, I guess I owe you an apology. Oh, that's all right, citizen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Maldetet, I would have sworn that when we opened this bag, we would have found nothing but... Uh... <laughs> well, at least we'll have something to eat on the way. <laughs> Out. <laughs> London, two weeks later. At a fancy ball in aid of the favorite charity of the British aristocracy, the Hertfordshire Hadassah. Well, Mr. Maldetet, and how are you enjoying our gala ball? Delightful, Your Grace. You know, everybody who is anybody is here tonight. Really? I, uh, I don't see Sir Percy Fink. Oh, you know Sir Percy, the darling of London society? Yes, we've met. <laughs> oh, he'll be here. He always arrives fashionably late. Ah. <laughs> Just a moment. Here he comes now. Well, that's his sedan chair arriving. I say, flunky. Oh, I'm not a flunky, I'm a lackey. I beg your pardon. How much do I owe you, lackey? Four pounds ten. Four pounds ten just to carry me here from Edinburgh? <laughs> The only reason I use this method of transportation is because there's no pollution. <laughs> well, there you are. And I'm glad you have to go back empty. <laughs> I say there, lackey. I'm not a lackey, I'm a flunkey. That's the trouble with England. Can't tell the lackeys and the flunkies. <laughs> Announcing Sir Percy Fink. The darling of London society. I know. Ah, <laughs> oh, the Duchess of Worcestershire. How are you, dear? Oh, the dirty, how elegant you look. You like it? I got it off the rack. <laughs> Cynthia, you're adorable. Oh, Percy, I'll bet you say that to all the girls. Yes, the boys don't care to hear it. <laughs> Hi, Joe, isn't that the, the Earl of Sandwich? Hello, Percy. What's that you have in your hand, Sandwich? New invention of mine. Oh? Two slices of bread with meat in between. I don't know what to call it. Um, why not call it pastrami? <laughs> Percy, you naughty boy, you're late. Why, what time is it? 10.30. Thank you, Lady Hamilton. <laughs> She's fast. At least that's what Nelson says. Uh, how are you, Sir Percy? Oh, I'm fine, Mel de Ted. How are you? I'd like you to meet my superior, Citizen Robespierre. The great Robespierre! This is indeed a great <laughs> honor, sir. A great <laughs> honor. How do you do? How do you do? May I offer you some refreshment? Uh, claret, burgundy, chablis, uh, the uncola. No, no, thanks. I understand you chefs are having a spot of um, trouble in La Belle France, some sort of uh, political upheaval. And what's it called? The French Revolution. Ah, yes, a good name for it. Much more sensible than calling it the War of 1812. <laughs> and how is that heroic Englishman getting along who's giving you all that trouble? What's his name? The, uh... The crimson crumpet, the the the, the uh, yellow bagel, the purple pizza, the brown pumpernickel. Of course, yes, I knew it was some sort of ethnic delicacy. <laughs> we are not worried, Monsieur. He shall be in our hands tonight. Oh, do you uh, really think so? I say, Percy. <laughs> I say, Sir Andrew, never sneak up on someone sniffing snuff. I am sorry, but would you recite that most beautiful new poem you composed? Well, I've done it so many times. Oh, but it's dashed good. I know. Oh, please. Oh, come on. Hey, watch it. Yours has a knot in it. That Belgian lace can sting. Do it for me. Oh, very well, I shall. I say, everyone, everyone, Percy's going to recite that most beautiful new poem. Oh. Suck it to him first. 
I like that sucking with his purse. <laughs> and actually, it's not really. <laughs> Pretty special. I dashed it off at my hairdressers while I was having my wig teased. It's about that chap they called, uh, the chocolate donut? Brown pumpernickel. Ah, yes. I got the color right, didn't I? <laughs> it goes like this. They seek him here. They seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Always in the pretty pickle, that damned elusive pumpernickel. <laughs> hard to believe that foppish idiot is the brown pumpernickel. Don't let his appearance fool you. He's smarter than he looks. He'd have to be. <laughs> well, time to bait the trap. Ah, Sir Percy. Uh, <laughs> hello, Mel, it's it. Time to bait the trap. In a moment, another slice of the brown pumpernickel. Time to bait the trap. Ah, Sir Percy. Uh, <laughs> hello, Mel, it's it. Time to bait the trap. You can stop the pretense, Brown Pumpernickel. Oh, you know my identity, do you? Yes, and I bring you bad news from Paris. Don't tell me they're all out of postcards. No, no, there are a couple of new prisoners in the Bastille. You might have heard of them. Lord Hillary and Lady Fink. Grandmama and Grandpapa? You're lying. Do you recognize this? The picture I gave my grandpa parents. The Latin motto of our family. Homo non panem albo modo vivit. Man does not live by white bread alone. Well, Brown Pumpernickel, I'm afraid you're my prisoner. Shall we go? Just a moment. Just a moment. Start baking. Okay, boss. <laughs> Shall we go? <laughs> Follow that sedan chair. <laughs> Where are we? What's that water down there? Thames River, sir. Well, you're too close to the edge. Move back. Terribly sorry, old boy, but this is where you get off. <laughs> and now, I'm off to rescue my grandpa parents in the Paris. Thank <laughs> my dear Pumpernickel. You're off to Paris to meet Madame Guillotine. Don't panic, chaps. Bread will triumph. Or as we say in French, le pain is mightier than the soil. <laughs> A flunky. I should have known, of course. He's a donkey flunky. <laughs> Get up here and watch it, you jackass. Uh, uh, no offense. <laughs> By Jove, I haven't seen such an ugly crowd since I went to a hockey game in Boston. <laughs> Next aristocrat condemned to die, the brown pumpernickel. Hey! Otherwise known as Sir Percy Fink. The darling of London society. <laughs> well, Sir Percy, a sharp blade awaits you. Really? Hugo, place his head on the block. Just a moment. 
Surely even your bloodthirsty code of ethics recognizes the right of the condemned man to one final request. Very well, what is your final request? I've never been to San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I say, mail the tet. Mm. Who was that masked man? Oh, shut up. <laughs> All right, Hugo, release the blade. Hello, he's gone. Round <laughs> pumpernickel. And just to rub it in, sliced. <laughs> Fink will die. Hillary, what's to become of us? Steady, old girl. Remember, you're a Fink. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Enjoying your final moments on Earth. You arch fiend, what have you done with our grandson, sir? Ah, uh, he seems to have escaped us momentarily. A oh, bully for Percy. So, in his place, you die. I'm not afraid. Before this day is done, you'll be up to your pipic in Callaway seeds. <laughs> Enough. You go. Oh, Hillary. <laughs> old girl. Villain, bloodthirsty villain, you, sir. We're not afraid. Do your worst. We're not afraid of you. And why should you be? Percy! <laughs> Booby, Zadie! <laughs> There's no time to lose. Follow me. That way. I'll see you later, darling. <laughs> well, 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 if it isn't the brown pumpernickel. Fresh daily. <laughs> You know who I am? I'm the greatest swordsman in France. And you know who I am? The, the darling, darling of London. London. Again. He's around here somewhere, citizen. Of course! He's loose here in the Bastille where all our prisoners are. Check the cells! Yes, citizen. There are three prisoners in there. <laughs> Check the next cell. Yes, citizen. There are 14 prisoners in there. <laughs> The orchestra's on a break. <laughs> He's gone again. Never mind that. What about the big cell? The one with the 1,500 prisoners? The big cell? I'm afraid to look. Come on. Open it up. My puppet citizen. Open wait. it up. <laughs> it's all clear. There's nothing. The guards must have them outside. Come on. That's brown power. <laughs> and now, through the magic of our slow motion camera, let's reverse the action and watch it again. Thank you, Grandpa But it was not I alone who saved the day. I must give credit where credit is due. To those unsung and dedicated heroes behind the scenes, those gallant and tireless people, without whose hard work, this whole sketch would not have been possible. <laughs> Union May.
Well, I see by the clock on a wall that it's time to bid you one and all goodbye. Goodbye. So long. So long. Farewell. Farewell. Adieu. Adieu. Be good. Stay well. Bye bye. Keep warm. Relax. At ease. Take care. Stay loose. Adieu, mon vieux. À la prochaine. Goodbye till when we meet again. Additional writing, Gary Ferrier and Aubrey Tapman. This is Bernard Cowan speaking. <laughs>